Hello, I'm Michael Richard, and thanks for joining me. A long time ago, a very long time, when I was 20, I had been working for banks in London and I was bored and I decided on a whim to join the British Army. And so I went to a recruitment office and I signed up. And it was all volunteer and in those days you were sent off to the Recruit Selection Centre in the north of England for three days to give you a taste of army life and some lectures and presentations on the different branches of the service so you could choose which one you wanted to go into. But you also had the option at the end of the three days to opt out if you decided it wasn't for you. So you had nothing to lose, really. Anyway, I took the train with a bunch of other potential recruits and we went up to Sutton Coalfield near Birmingham and we were issued army uniform. Well, this was my first clue that I wasn't going to like this because those uniforms were incredibly scratchy and uncomfortable. The second red flag, if you like, was that evening when we were fed. And my first experience of army cooking was a draw. I forced it down, it forced its way back up. And to this day, I still believe that army cooks could screw up cold corned beef out of a can. Anyway, over the next two days, we were given various lectures on the different branches of the service and given tests to determine how smart we were. Well, I'm not sure that they were determined how smart we were. I think they were to determine how dumb we were because the questions were so ridiculously simple that I can't believe that anybody failed them, and yet they did in droves. Anyway, I had decided that this wasn't for me, that I was going to opt out. And then at the end of the second day, they gave us a presentation on the intelligence corps. And this was it. It sounded very glamorous, very Bondian. They made it sound as if we were traveling the world, driving exotic supercars, meeting beautiful women, and some interesting people, some which we'd have to kill. So I decided then and there that if I could get into the intelligence corps, I would go in, and if I couldn't, I would opt out. Anyway, on the third day, we were each handed a piece of paper, and we had to write our three choices in order of preference of the regiments we wanted to join. So I wrote down Intelligence Corps, Intelligence Corps, Intelligence Corps, and then sat and waited. And at two o'clock, I was summoned into a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a serving officer in the British Army. Now, the officer in question was a captain from the Irish Rangers. And if you know anything about the British and the Irish, you know that we don't have a lot of respect for each other. Well, certainly the British don't have a lot of respect for the Irish. And we make jokes about the Irish in the same way that the US make jokes about Polacks. Anyway, this officer said, looked at my piece of paper and said, well, I see you only want to go in the intelligence corps. He said, they don't have any vacancies. And I said, well, that's not my understanding, sir. My understanding is that they need trained linguists and I'm a polyglot. A polyglot? What's a polyglot, he said. It's somebody who speaks multiple languages, sir. Well, how many languages do you speak? Seven, sir, fluently. Well, what do you speak? Hungarian, Czechoslovakian, Serbo-Croat, Romanian, Polish, Russian, and Mandarin. Well, how did you learn all those? Well, my father was a diplomat, sir, and spent most of his career in Eastern Europe, so I grew up speaking all those languages. Approved, he said. And an hour later, I was on the train to Ashford to begin my training. Now, you might ask why I had chosen those seven particular languages, considering that I didn't speak a single word of any of them. And the reason was simple. I figured that he might speak some French and some German, but the chances of him speaking any of the languages I'd mentioned were slim to none. And if I had, I'd have just smiled and knocked it out. And that would have been the end of it. Anyway, a month later, I was in basic training in a drill session, and I was called out of the session to the CO's office. And as I was walking over there, I was thinking to myself, oh boy, I'm in trouble. Anyway, I got into the office and the CO said, pack your bags, private, you're going to Prague in an hour. And I said, me, sir? Prague, sir? Why, sir? He said, well, we need a Czechoslovakian and a Serbo-Croat speaker, and you're the only one we've got. And I looked at him with absolute astonishment, and that wasn't an act. And I said, but, sir, I don't speak those languages. I speak some French and some German, but very minimal. I don't speak those two. He said, it says here you speak, and he read off all the seven languages I'd said. And I said, I don't know where that came from, sir, but it's obviously a massive mistake on somebody's part. And his jaw literally hit the floor. I never thought I would see it, but I did. 
and I was dismissed. Now, I'm sure that they, he and they, all knew that I had pulled a fast one. But I also believe that they valued the initiative more than the accuracy. And I then spent the next six years in the British Army serving in Germany, Northern Ireland and the Middle East and ended up speaking fluent German and fluent Arabic. So it wasn't too far from the truth that I was a linguist, but I certainly wasn't when I signed up. And that's how I got into the intelligence call. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.